people that suffer from that. Well, we're moving on now. If you can see, Jan and I are self-conscious about how we're holding our hands and everything else. That's because we've got an expert with us here to talk to us about how you can improve your speech through better hand movement, something like that. We'll figure it all out. Dr. Lillian Glass, the author of Talk to Win, is here with us right now. Welcome, Lillian. Hi, Good to Lillian. be here. Hi, how are you? Now, when you sat down, you said the way that we are sitting was perfect. Exactly. I was very feminine. I wonder if the camera can do a, a wide, two shot. A wide, and Dan was very masculine. You. It's very interesting. You take up less room. You see how there's an angle to you. Your legs are together. Your hands are together. And look at Dan. His legs I'm are apart. Mess, He's taking up all this room. But that is one of the differences between male-female communication. Men tend to take up more room, and women tend to not take up But a talk, lot of looking room. at Dan here, he looks like he's much more open to talk. He's a little more relaxed. He does. He know. does. But it's, it's a very male type of communication pattern. In the movie Tootsie, where I worked with Dustin Hoffman, that was one of the things that we did with male-female communication. If you recall the scene when he was in the Russian tea room, he was all towards himself. I'll have a jubilee on the rocks with a twist. Uh -huh. But when he played Michael Dorsey, he was sitting in his agent's office and he'd sit down and his gestures were wide apart. So it's very important. And it's also very important for women to be aware of this, especially in business. They want to exert more power and more credibility. They need to take up more room and not not be diminutive in that type of sense. What you're saying is women bring their gesturing in Inward. and men bring men in. tend to bring it outward. So there is a male female communication difference in terms of gesturing. Also men tend to as I said take up more space. Women use more facial gestures. They smile more. Men tend to use less. They don't use their jaws as much as women do. So there is a difference. Gosh, I'm so conscious of all this oh, while we're talking. Now there are, are some rules for gesturing. There, there is but it's, it's interesting to note that gesturing is very, very important, and your body language says a lot. If we look at some of the political figures, we saw the debates right. recently, and we saw a number of candidates do a lot of things that we can learn from. There were candidates who will go nameless here that may have... Uh, gestured inappropriately or have had stiff gestures and that made a difference in terms of public mm -hmm. perception some people had poor posture posture is one of the most important thing in terms of gesturing because it's very important to maintain good posture and to have the gestures towards your body not all over the place because a lot of times you take up too much room and you can be invading other people's space now when I was anchoring news one of the first things that they told me they said even though we're shooting you here up. Go ahead and move your arms and move your hands when you're talking and that way you won't look so stiff. Exactly. And so that's one of the things. Movement is hand movement is great. It just depends how much you do it. But a hand movement depends a lot on the culture, your ethnic background. There are certain cultures where hand movement is a way of life. There are other cultures where it's not appropriate. And if you do certain hand movements, hand gestures in certain cultures, it's not <laughs> yes. appropriate. For example, never do this OK sign in Brazil. Right. Is that right? Yes. In the Mideast, I won't you tell also you, don't do this. Right. In the Obviously, Mideast. somebody here has been to Brazil. Yes. But, I won't uh, tell you what I called a group of Brazilian plastic <laughs> surgeons doing that. So uh, when I said, everything's OK, and they went, oh! <laughs> wow. Miriam, do you know what you do? This year, you called all these uh, plastic Now, we have, a, we have a list here for rules for gesturing. Right. Yeah, we can go Let's take a look at that. Sure. Okay. okay. Well, we can go through them. I didn't even know there was rules. Uh -huh. well, first of all, it's important to to gesture, to emphasize points, but not too much. Also, keep your hands in your lap when you're sitting. Keep your hands at your sides when you're standing. And also keep your fingers relaxed. Now, this doesn't mean you have to be stiff or keep your hands to the sides, but just generally, lightly. Fingers are very important because when you get nervous, the first thing that happens is your fingers tend to tense up. They tend to get stiff. They tend to get cold, clammy. So a lot of times, people are walking around like this, and they're not even realizing it with really mm -hmm. stiff hands. So just relax your hands. And oftentimes, if you relax your hands, you've relaxed everything. It's also important people consider, what do you do with your hands? How do I walk? Do you know how Princess Diana and Prince Charles yes. yeah. stand? Now, what do, what do they do when they walk around? This uh, behind the exactly. And that's very mm -hmm. a very mm -hmm. powerful pose. Mm -hmm. So when you don't know what to do with your hands, just put them in back of you. <laughs> that okay. could be that a very good, good point. Lillian, we are out of time oh, for this but you'll be back. It's going so fast. Gosh, where has the time <laughs> gone? Know. You know, it's just, we want to tell you that Lillian is you the author okay. of a wonderful 
love this old book. <laughs> Talk to Win. If you don't have this book, make sure that you pick it up. It will help you in all aspects of your life. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. Thanks, very Lily. good. Really? Lily. Okay, thank you. All right. When we come back, we're going to head for some of Boston's best clam chowder, so stay mm -hmm. with us. Time. I'm trying to project is what I'm trying to do. I may have been mumbling a little bit early, but not now. I'm ready to project, and that's what we're going to talk about, how projecting and the way you speak makes a difference. Where's that projector? It's in the closet. <laughs> Dr. Lillian Glass is here with us today to help us speak correctly. Welcome, Dr. Hello. Glass. Good it's good to, to have you here today. Good to be here. We're not talking really just about speaking. We're talking about our entire image. Exactly. And so many people don't realize that they die off at the end of sentences. I did a Gallup poll for the book that I wrote called Talk to Win and asked people, what are some of the most annoying speech habits? And the most annoying speech habit is a person that dies off at the end and talks like that and mumbles and you go, hello, excuse yeah. me, excuse me, could you speak up, could you speak up? It's so annoying and people think, well, that's just the way I am. There's nothing I can do about it. But now there are things you can do about it. You can improve the way you project yourself, your image. The first thing starts with posture. And it's very important for everybody to remember that they need to have good posture with the shoulders back and the head up. Because if you have your head down like this, you don't project well because you close everything off. So it's important to keep everything open. It's also important to keep your stomach muscles moving and to keep these muscles really in gear. So for example, instead of going, hi, how are you? You go, hi, how are you? By bearing down on your <laughs> abdominal muscles. So in case your microphones go out. <laughs> Just bear down. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, let's do a couple of exercises because I think this would be fun. Okay. The first one could you do. <laughs> I do. Come on, <laughs> play with me. She here. Surely believes. Play with yeah. me. Okay. Why don't we stand up All right. okay. and do, do an exercise that is called the heel toe bounce. And a lot of us used to do this when the we were kids. The heel toe, I heel -toe my, bounce. Uh, I need my tap shoes and for the tap shoes. Right, the three of us. What we need to do is stand on your toes and take your breath in and go, ah, oh, and let gravity pull you down. Why don't you do try it? Do we need a tambourine to do this? Uh, no, we're going oh, to have all that. <laughs> okay, so why don't you try it? Take a breath in. Ah. Uh, right, now, do you feel how gravity pulled the tone down and you felt it right here? I wondered what that was. Yeah. yeah. Why don't you try right it now, there. Jan? Okay. Ah. Uh, <laughs> not bad, not bad. So the whole key with these heel-toe bounces, when you're waiting for the elevator, you may want to, uh, and really get your voice you down. Get when you want to talk to your boss about something and you're getting nervous, uh, hi, how are you? <laughs> Good to meet you. Now, we'll do some things that are more practical. We can, I guess, have a seat here. Okay. The next thing you need to do is to really work these muscles out with a passive exercise called a tummy punch. So take your breath in, hold it, and go, ah, kind of bear down on your muscles there. Right, right? Okay, now you try it. <laughs> Pretty good. Now, Feels if you, darn good, it I'll does tell you. feel good, and it's interesting that you say that because babies, they all go through a stage where they enjoy feeling the way they sound. They go mo, mm -hmm, and they feel themselves vibrating, and that's what we need to do. We need to feel ourselves vibrating in our stomach areas. Another exercise to help your abdominal muscles are called the hand clasp, and it's something that you may have seen opera singers go ah. Oh, <laughs> like that, but it helps you to a great extent because it's a good exercise to help get more tension on your abdominal muscles. So clasp your hands together. This is the hand clasp. It's and an take your breath in and go, breath in, hold it, <gasps> through your mouth. Oh, 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 oh. Pretty good. Like you build up your muscles. Your, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's try it. Now, if you push the other way, uh, I was hoping well, that's, that's, a very, that's interesting that you mentioned that. You can <laughs> even do this uh, in the car. You can do this. You can to, do this when you're driving. You can do, well, well, no, I'm not like this, but you can do this against the steering wheel. So you have resistance. You go, ah, uh, or you pull, ah, uh, but don't pull too hard. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> hey, what happened? Where's my wheel? Oh, no, Dr. Giles, what did you tell us? But he sounded good but just before he really went. Did yeah. before you. <laughs> Lillian, we're out of time. It went so quickly. That's here. just because you don't want to do any more of these exercises. That's not true. Yeah, 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 we're just out of time. We want to remind everyone Lillian's book is called. Called Talk to Win it's by Dr. Book. Lillian Glass. It's an excellent it's book. Actually a good your bookstore may be out of it. It's on the bestseller list, it's and great. make sure that you get your mm -hmm. copy. Thank you for great. being it's here. Been Thank pleasure. you, Lillian. Right. Stay with us because next we're going out to one of New York City's oldest and most popular uh, restaurants. Uh, uh.